Hi, I'm Jen from Shabby Fabrics, back for the green block. This is the Pinwheel Pine Tree. Lots of fun with this block. We'll be using all kinds of exciting things, including some templates. Don't worry about templates. Some people are very scared about them and avoid them, and I'm here to let you know there's nothing to it. So let's get started. The first thing we'll be focusing on will be the actual pinwheels. And I wanted to show you how this block goes together. So you see this in different sections and we'll talk you through each part of it. We'll start with these pinwheels because that's the main part of it. While we did cover pinwheels in the basic series, we'll be doing that just a little bit different here because it's a non-standard size. We're starting with a four and a quarter inch square of the green. And I'll be using my spinning mat and my smaller two and a half by six and a half inch creative bridge ruler. One of the reasons I love this uh, spinning mat with something like this is I'm going to cut twice on the diagonal. And I love that I don't have to disturb that fabric. I can just pick that up and cut corner to corner. Now I want to point out something and I've got the magic sizing here for a reason. We'll be dealing with bias and we covered bias in the beginner series, but again, bias, the thing about bias to remember is that bias has stretch and that's not a quilter's friend. You really don't want bias unless you're intentionally trying to go around curves, like maybe a scalloped binding or on a bias binding. Those types of things are desirable, but when you're piecing blocks together, bias is not your friend. And by adding some sizing to the fabric before you cut it, it gives the fabric a little more stability and keeps the bias in check so that it's not working against you as much. We went ahead initially and cut a four and a quarter inch square of this. Outside here, there is no bias, but when I cut on those 45 degrees, like I did here on these angles, now there's bias. This is stretchy. This is stretchy. This is not. This is significant. When we put our pinwheels together, we have deliberately cut a four and a quarter inch square twice in the diagonal. So it's the non bias side, the non stretchy side that will be making up our pinwheels. So I just wanted to point that out. This is the part, the non stretchy part that's going to make up those sections of our pinwheel. So wait, there's one. This is my non stretchy side. And it's very easy to get confused about that. That's why I pick them up carefully, deliberately and slowly to make sure that I definitely understand what side I'm sewing together. So you'll simply take those to the sewing machine, sewing a quarter inch seam allowance. I like to use a starter strip on that because when I start with these uh, points like this, again, we talked about this in a previous uh, video. It seems like those tips kind of dive down and my machine can kind of almost kind of eat them up a little bit. But with a starter strip, it seems like it just helps mitigate that. So I, let's just do one together, show you how that starter strip works in concert with this. I'm just going to sew straight across it. It's just a piece of fabric. And I'm being very careful knowing that outside here, I definitely do have bias. See how it just carries right onto that, my triangles. On the pinwheels, you will be pressing to the darker green. Let's just set that seam and we will press to the darker green every time. This is one of those times where this type of motion has zero place in this block. You will distort your fabric by doing that. We can go ahead and get those little dog ears off. And of course you'll make the other four and then lay out your pinwheel. And I'm going to show you the back of that real quick. We press to the dark every time, but when you actually sew those units of the pinwheel together, I press the seams open just to reduce bulk. Definitely. This is a confluence. You have eight different things coming together. We want to leave that as flat as possible. And that's why pressing the seams open 
in the stages of those uh, that completely going together is really important. So I wanted to point that out to you for sure. Now let's go ahead and go into this square up here, which is an unusual size. It's six and seven eighths. Now I talked to you a little bit about the simple seven eighths ruler, which ends at five and seven eighths. So you're like, Jen, that's great. You know, you, you, you talked me into getting this ruler, but now I have a cut bigger than this ruler. Now what do I do? Well, Tammy, who is absolutely incredible, if you've seen her on any of our other videos, and is just a wealth of knowledge with quilting, and I'm learning from her every day. Um, thank you, Tammy. <laughs> she gets all the videos ready for us and makes all this actually possible. Um, she has shown me how to grow my rulers, and I'm like, what do you mean by that? So this creative grid, the simple 7 eighths, ends at 5 and 7 eighths. Well, if we know we want to cut a six and seven eighths, and I've cleaned up my fabric. I'm starting, I clean that edge. I'm gonna lay my other ruler, this six and a half by 12 and a half, or any ruler that has a one inch measurement. And I'm gonna lay that along there. That's an inch. Now I'm gonna lay this five and seven eighths and butt that directly up against it. This from here to there is six and seven eighths. I will make my cut. And I'll simply turn and clean up the edge. And isn't that cool how you can grow your rulers? You can use your rulers in combination with each other to get the desired results. So let's see that one more time. I'm going to line up my one along that line. And I'm definitely looking right along here, butting that directly right up next to it and cutting. Isn't that awesome? So cool. These are basically your setting triangles for this block and we will just cut corner to corner here. So that's this part of the block right there. So you've got your, your three pinwheel units, which you would have assembled. One is it's going to stay all by itself right now. And you can sew the other two together if you'd like. But I want to move now onto the templates. Again, if you have Try templates in the past and not enjoy them. I'm going to, I'm going to take the guesswork out of this. Let's just do a little cleanup over here so I can show you this part of it. The templates are part of the download. You definitely need to go ahead and get the download. And normally you see me use friction pen all the time. And <laughs> I've done this before where I have definitely traced around a template. And then when I went to iron it down, all of my lines went away. And I felt very blonde in that moment. So I want to help you not make that same mistake. Um, I love using freezer paper along with templates. How you would do that is very straightforward. You simply have your templates. I'll just get to get a piece of freezer paper and I'll walk you through the process here. Very straightforward. Templates will be part of the download. Just get a single sheet of the freezer paper and the lines will be much bolder on the download. This is just our sample for here. Come over here with a pencil or a pen, whatever you want to use. You'll simply trace around that on the solid line on the outside. The templates we'll have for the download will have a dash line here. This will be a nice, bold, solid line that you'll be able to trace through here. Or you might want to use a light box. Those are also available on our website. They're wonderful to have. I use them all the time, especially for hand embroidery. But you'll basically trace around your templates. And then you'll go ahead and let's move that spinning mat out of the way. And we'll iron them to the right side of the fabric. Another thing I recommend is you label your, if I didn't say it already, label those because there is a left and a right on certain pieces, just like these two and those two. So go ahead and label those and then take them to your iron. What I love about these um, fridge of paper is you only have to make it once. Once you use that, you can take it away and use it again. It's simply, here, this is my, here's what I'm saying. This isn't forever. You can use it again and again. So let's say that you're going to make a quilt that has multiple blocks using the templates. Use them again and again. Or maybe you're making the same quilt with a friend. Uh, let your friend have your templates once you're done with them. 
once it's on here, and I'm going to use definitely use my spinning mat. That's going to definitely help me. See, I know I knew I was trying to put the spinning mat away, and I'm getting it again. Just I use it all the time. So we'll simply come here, trace around, and you're just following the lines of the template. You get the idea. Spinning mat is just a dream. I'm turning that instead of the fabric. Okay. And then you can even just leave that on there until you're ready to use it. And that way you don't forget what that piece is for. For pieces like this that have kind of an engineered corner, same thing. And you're going to see why the engineered corner is so great. They just pieces kind of just kind of lock together. So you just kind of work your way around the shape. All right. So that's just so on and so forth. So now that the templates are all cut out, let's talk about assembling those templates. There's really nothing to it. So we'll get our pieces put together here. We're going to assemble the bottom portion. So we're going to keep cutting that out. Hardest part is just getting the template back off there. There you go. There's that. And we said that this portion is going to go on our left. You're going to see how these engineered corners just lock together. I love it. So this goes like this. Now watch. See how that just fits in that notch so fabulously, so perfectly. Definitely want to pin this. I don't want any of this going anywhere while I'm sewing. See, there's nothing to it. Those engineered corners, they make life so good. Look at that. All right, let's press that. Set that seam. And let's see here for our sample. That's right, we went ahead and pressed toward the green. Fantastic. Look at that. And then again with the piece, the other piece, you'll just put that there, right? Same thing. Same sight picture there. Sort of a quarter of an inch and flip, press the outside. So move that out of the way. Let's bring this right in front of us here. And then with the other templates, you have your tree, tree trunk. You'll just sew a quarter inch. Turn and flip, press to the white. I'm going to go ahead and clip that with our Kai scissors. Same over here. So, we'll go ahead and trim that. And then for these pieces, notice I label those B and the F. And I'm not worried now. I can iron that away. That's the beautiful part of a friction pen. It's gone. It's just a non-event. If you're not comfortable with that, you could use a little sticky note that says B or F. It just helps you keep the orientation uh, going, you know, correctly because there is definitely a left and a right. So for the final assembly, we have this portion. We have this portion. We sew this unit to our first pinwheel, the two pinwheels to here. For the final assembly, you'll right sides together, flip here right sides together here. This comes together. Obviously there's a seam here, pressing that seam open here. P 
probably pressing this way or the back, whichever, or up here or open, whichever your fabric naturally wants to do. That's your decision. And I will show you what we did here shortly so you can mimic us if you want to. With these corners, because with triangles, this is something I want to point out. And this threw me as a quilter early on is I, you know, I want that tip of that to line up here. No, that is going to be over that way and over that way. Because think about it. If you had that lining up exactly and you sew a quarter of an inch and you turn and flip, see how it never made it to the corner. So you have to extend beyond and you have to extend beyond here. Your lineup point is actually right here. That's the middle. So when you're lined up, when you are traveling right along that, I want you to be able to see what I'm referring to. That right there, you know you're in the right space. There we go. Pin, sew, quarter inch flip, and quarter inch flip on the other side, and your block is complete. So I hope you enjoyed making this block. I know this is one of the more challenging blocks. You're doing great. We'll see you next time.